Now that we cruise more often, we've gotten a bit spoiled. While I used to book primarily interior cabins, we tend to avoid them recently. So, for our first ever Carnival cruise, we booked a balcony room on Carnival Panorama. If you want to know more about this type of accommodation, you are in luck. I'm DB from EatSleepCruise.com and we share our thoughts in this complete Carnival Panorama balcony cabin tour and review. Our balcony cabin was room number 8387, which is considered category BD on the ship. This aft stateroom was on the starboard side. It was a short walk to the aft elevators, or a bit longer walk to the midship elevators. Unlike some cruise ships, Carnival Panorama does have three banks of elevators, meaning you're never too far from one regardless of your stateroom's location. Deck 8 is only two decks from the Lido deck, which is deck 10, and three decks above the upper promenade on deck 5. For us, we felt this location was ideal, as we could easily walk to the popular decks. Also, we never heard any noise from either the outdoor decks or from the bars and restaurants closer to the promenade. Carnival Cruise Line indicates that a standard balcony room is 220 square feet. On our first impressions of the cabin, we thought it was on par with similar staterooms from other brands like Norwegian Cruise Line or Royal Caribbean. The space was certainly adequate for two adults cruising on this seven night voyage. The layout of this room had the bed located closer to the balcony door, which is actually our preferred layout. Upon entering the room, we passed the bathroom on our right. The bathroom was pretty basic. The shower did not have a door, but rather a shower curtain. Compared to some other larger ships from other lines, the bathroom space felt a bit cramped. In terms of bathroom storage, there were a few shelves for toiletries on either side of the sink. Though, we could have used another storage space in the shower to store his and her bath products. Continuing into the room, there is a closet on the left. The storage space here is maximized for families with a few different configurations possible. For those with little ones, there's an option to have two clothes racks so you can hang children's garments on the lower one. We folded up the bottom rack so we could utilize one full length rack to accommodate dresses and our formal outfits. Along with these options, there was a standard set of shelves with some drawers for storing additional clothing items or shoes. The desk area was a bit smaller than what we've come to expect from other brands. Typically, there's enough space for our electronics along with space for the princess to get ready. Unfortunately, this was not the case in the Carnival Panorama balcony stateroom. I had to store some of my gear on the shelves off to the side and the remainder just stayed on the sofa. Further, there was only one drawer on the desk which housed the hairdryer. Across from the desk was a sofa and coffee table. This became our dumping grounds throughout the trip, as it usually does. Later on in the cruise, it also became home for our towel animal farm. As furniture goes, the sofa was comfortable and was on par with other balcony cabins. Further into the room, there's a flat screen television mounted to the wall. We never tested out the television, but it was positioned so it could be viewed from either the bed or the sofa. No matter the cruise, we we're typically going all day. So falling asleep is never an issue for us. Still, we found the bed to provide plenty of support and comfort. Next to each side of the bed were small nightstands. One drawback of the stateroom was the lack of outlets or USBs near the bed. In our opinion, this was a huge oversight. Being on our first Convo cruise, another surprising thing was the balcony. Instead of the standard sliding door, there was a large window and a small door that opened out to the balcony. This meant that leaving the door open while in the stateroom was never really an option. In terms of the balcony itself, there were two chairs and a small table. The size of the balcony felt comparable to other ships. There was just enough room to sit outside and enjoy the ocean breezes and the views, but you certainly weren't going to suntan on this balcony. Overall, the balcony stateroom on Carnival Panorama provided a convenient and easily accessible layout. We had just enough space for our seven night cruise, though the decor was rather basic and did not give the room a luxurious feel. As Carnival Panorama is a brand new ship, the cabin was in impeccable shape of course, but the ship did lack the style of other newer ships. Still, our cabin was more than functional, and we found it an ideal place to rejuvenate before heading out and enjoying all the ship's amenities. And there you have it. That's our Carnival Panorama balcony tour and review. But of course, we'd love to hear from you. Let us know in the comment section below your review of a stateroom on a Carnival cruise ship. I'm DB from EatSleepCruise.com, and if you enjoyed this video, we'd really appreciate it if you gave it a big thumbs up. If you're new to the channel or have been lurking around for a while and haven't gotten around to it, 
What are you waiting for? Make sure to subscribe down below and to check the notification icon. That way you get updated whenever we put out brand new cruise videos each week. You can also say hi to us all over social media at eat sleep cruise. And thanks again for watching.